The tech sector is looking east. Taiwan's Acer has reached an agreement to buy U.S. PC maker Gateway for about $710 million in a deal expected to close by December. Acer will continue to operate under the Gateway brand name in the U.S. The combined entity will have a revenue of more than $15 billion, ship more than 20 million PCs a year, and take Lenovo's number three position in the world computer market. Meanwhile, speculation surrounding another possible Asian acquisition, Seagate Technologies CEO will William Watkins, in a recent interview, said an undisclosed Chinese firm expressed interest in buying his company. He told the New York Times that the U.S. government is freaking out over the possibility due to national security concerns surrounding the high-tech nature of the business. Watkins went on to clarify that his company isn't for sale. But since Seagate is one of only two remaining U.S. disk drive makers, observers want to know, will America lose its technological edge? And what will this mean for American jobs? In the studio to discuss the future of America's tech industry, Dr. George Calhoun, executive in residence at the House School of Technology Management at Stevens Institute of Technology. Jason Yin, professor of strategic management and international business at Seton Hall University's Stillman School of Business. And joining us by phone, Sammy Sajari, president of the Cyber Defense Agency. Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. William Watkins says the U.S. government is freaking out over the idea of Seagate being purchased by a Chinese firm. We have another quote from Michael Wessel of the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission where he says the purchase by the Chinese or other nations of a disk drive maker merits a full review to determine what our risks are. Sammy, what are our risks? Uh, the concern is the uh, American government and the critical infrastructure of the United States depends on the uh, Seagate technology. And so uh, if the uh, Chinese decide that they want to insert malicious code into the firmware hardware of these uh, memory devices, it poses a serious national security risk to our critical infrastructure. Jason, should the U.S. government be freaking out? Well, um, I don't think so. Uh, the uh, two points I'm trying to make, uh, one is relevant to my personal experience about uh, 50 years ago when Chinese government trying to get into WTO. At that time, there was many people in China uh, strongly against the uh, uh, entry of WTO because they think the flood in of foreign products and also foreign investment will wipe out national industry and will threat the uh, national security. I tell them, just tell me what's the definition of national uh, industry. Given the globalized economy, there's no such thing called national economy or national industry anymore. So we have to integrate with the global economy to gain the competitiveness rather than trying to protect your national uh, companies from competition. That will not work. George, on a, on a similar note, the Seagate story broke the same week Germany came out and said they accused members of the Chinese army, Chinese army hackers, of trying to hack into German government computers. Can we do business with a, com with a country maybe we can't trust? Somebody like Sammy might argue, we don't know if we can trust this country. Well, I think those are two very different stories with different implications. I am not an alarmist regarding the disk drive industry. Um, in fact, Seagate already builds most of their disk drives in the Far East, many of them in China. Uh, Japan, uh, uh, IBM sold their disk drive business a couple of years ago to Hitachi in Japan. So I, I don't, I'm not saying that there isn't a technology component there, but I'm not sure that it is um, a, uh, um, uh, as critical as, as uh, some of the comments in the press suggest. On the other hand, um, a military or quasi-military attempt to penetrate a security network from another nation's military is, is certainly something uh, that you have to take very seriously. I, I think that's in a different uh, page of the newspaper, though, than the commercial uh, transactions of the kind that we're talking about here with Seagate. Okay, Sammy, George was talking about disk drives being made overseas. They're already happening. How does this sound to you? Uh, well, I think that's correct. I think there's a number of uh, different firmware and software that's being made overseas. They pose a strategic threat as well in terms of malicious code that can be activated in the future against our critical infrastructure. So it's not a question of whether this pushes us over the top or not. It's, it's one more, an equation of a, of a number of uh, vulnerabilities we face by outsourcing our IT overseas. 
Jason, I saw you shaking your head when, when George was giving his answer. What? Well, I, th no, I partially agree with him, uh, but uh, there is some um, you know, defense contract uh, high-tech component we want to protect us, like a few years ago when uh, Levono uh, merged IBM PC uh, division. They're trying to separate the defense uh, contract part of the business and then sell the rest part of China. Mm -hmm. I think that literally that created uh, a win-win situation for both companies. Okay. George, we continue to see Asian countries emerge as, uh, you know, kind of this hotbed of technology. It's not happening in many other countries. Is, is it really just about cheap labor? Well, I, I think the, it's, I, my perspective is I think it's easy to overstate uh, how far the Asian economies have really become high tech yet. I think they're in the manufacturing phase, definitely. Um, there is uh, beginning to be some development outsourcing, but I think what's happening is that the U.S. economy is, ha is in a long-term uh, process of specializing in the development in the IP. You, know, you look at the Standard & Poor 500 index today, 75% of the value of the companies on the S&P 500 is in intangible assets, technology, brand equity, the things that we are keeping and we are exporting uh, the manufacturing. Seagate's already doing their manufacturing overseas. So I, I'm not sure that I'm on the alarmist side of the spectrum on these particular stories. I'm not saying there aren't reasons to be concerned. but. Okay. Not on this one. Another manufacturing shift, we're seeing Acer now buying Gateway. Uh, does this kind of signify any, any trend that America is losing its stronghold in the tech market? Well, we are trying to uh, give away some of the manufacturing industry, but we are getting more in the service industry, especially in the financial service and the insurance and some other high-tech uh, area. That's not something, say, we are start trying to sell out everything and then wrap up and <laughs> we quit. That's not the case at all. Okay, Sammy, uh, another overseas company buying another U.S. tech company. You advise the, the government on, on this. Can you give us maybe a sense of the climate down in Washington? Do they, do they feel America's losing its grip here? Absolutely. Uh, I think there have been a number of uh, Defense Science Board and other kinds of DOD uh, organizations that have s expressed deep concern over the fact that the manufacture of these uh, items are, are outsourced uh, overseas and that uh, the Chinese have, have particularly have said that they intend to use information warfare as part of their next generation capability. Uh, so they clearly have the, the motivation, uh, they've got the, the means, and now the opportunity is increasing substantially. How does that... Does that uh, actually, that makes me a little bit nervous because uh, based on my study, and when we talk about all sorts of, um, we are not just all sorts of manufacturing or service, and now I see a big literature talk about American company, all sorts of R&D. So if we don't let, you know, let in this kind of exchange of uh, technology, eventually a lot of American companies for their own interest, they will develop R&D abroad. Would that benefit us? <laughs> so that kind of thing, we've got to think about it. Could be a benefit here. There's the, the concern that follows this, George. Are our best minds, though? You know, we're, we're seeing the shift here. Are our best minds going to follow? Is there going to be a, a brain drain shifting east? Um, I don't think you see any sign of that. I think it still is very much the other way. If you're uh, in countries like India and China, there still is a tremendous attraction of their best minds to the West. Now, you know, maybe there's more of them that eventually are cycling back and staying there, and that's good, because that's what we should want them to do. We want them to develop. We want the economies to become more integrated with ours, so they will eventually participate and be part of the consumption cycle as well as the production cycle. But no, I'm not, uh, I, 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 as, a, as an academic in the United States today, I'm not at all worried about that problem. I'm worried more that U.S. students perhaps aren't tracking into the engineering um, path quite as well, but we are attracting many, many foreign students still. Sammy, as, as a private business owner on the front lines, do you, do you see uh, an abundance of our best and brightest here, or are you concerned when it comes down to hiring? 
Uh, well, I, I look at the graduate programs in the universities today, and I note that the uh, majority of the computer science and uh, top-level engineering uh, graduate students are now foreign nationals, and uh, that concerns me because now the pool from which uh, we have to hire are increasingly uh, foreign. And uh, given that they don't always have the U.S. best interest at heart, uh, that's of concern, particularly in DOD and critical infrastructure applications. Sammy Sajari, Jason Yin, George Calhoun, thank you so much for, for sharing your thoughts on this issue. Thank you. Thank you.